Hey everyone, this is Jacob from RoboFlow, here today to talk about CNNs, RNNs, LSTMs, and transformers. So today we're going to look at the roadmap of how research in deep learning and neural networks has evolved over the years to get us to the point where we're at the transformer architecture. And we're going to talk a little bit about how the transformer architecture is starting to get into computer vision and uh, why you should uh, kind of be paying attention to the new transformers uh, that are being re released into uh, the vision field and kind of where they came from in terms of uh, a research standpoint. So diving in here next, um, the, the foundational neural network in, in computer vision is the, is the CNN, the, the convolutional neural network. So the way that this network is set up is it has an architecture such that an image is um, given to the network and it's split into a number of channels. Um, so uh, there, there's a number of channels where um, the convolutional neural network is making its convolutions. And at each stage, the convolutional neural network will be kind of compressing the resolution of the image. And you can form features from little patches of the image. So iterate over different boxes of the image, pooling these together and creating new features and then passing that down to the next compression layer, kind of making the the um the compression's even tighter and then once you get to the kind of the final output channel of the cnn then those are the ones that are then passed through to um, some sort of output layer like maybe um it's classification or something like that where where you know you have a soft max at the end of the the cnn um and that was you know introduced as far back as the 1980s of course we've started to see you know more impact of cnn's uh, just recently in the last 10 years or so um, but this concept has been around um, for for many years so now um, looking at uh, recurrent neural networks um, so these are another uh, neural network architecture that were was kind of more popular in nlp so this is where you have a sequence um, going into the neural network like this x1 x2 xt and usually these are maybe like text tokens um, and each of those features are passed through to a hidden state and the hidden state um, is passed through to the next hidden state along with the next X. Um, and that's kind of how you form the feature that's going to end up going through to your, to your output layer. Um, the problem with RNNs, however, is that they uh, often suffer from the vanishing gradient problem. That is, it's kind of difficult to reach back in the sequence to get um, for things like this X2 to influence um, Xs that are a lot further down the road. So, um, so the next kind of major research breakthrough in NLP was to uh, introduce the LSTM, the Long-Term Short-Term Memory Network. Uh, so this network is the same thing as the RNN where you have uh, the X, XT coming in along with the hidden state um, as we have in the RNN, but this time there are, there's more kind of inner mechanics into that hidden state to try to be able to tackle this vanishing gradient problem and to keep track of uh, data that's at different points in the sequence. And that's through a couple different gates that are in the middle of the LSTM hidden state. So there's the input gate and there's the forget gate. Um, and those all kind of go together to, to create the hidden state that you're going to then output to the next hidden state or to, to a prediction layer. or Sometimes with LSTMs and RNNs, they'll actually stack these layers so you don't just have one pass through, but you'll pass on to the next LSTM state. And then another thing with LSTMs that people started doing is they started going both directions. So that's known as like the by highway LSTM. And that's where, um, you know, you're passing uh, things through the sequence in both directions. So that was something that they were um, working on in NLP to kind of help uh, get more context around where um, different tokens are in, in the sequence. So the next thing that came out, though, was this paper in 2017. This is a landmark paper called Attention is All You Need. And that's where transformers were first introduced. Um, and basically the idea was we don't need to necessarily keep track of a sequence through these hidden states like, um, like we do in uh, LSTMs or in RNNs. Um, where we have kind of like a, a hidden state that's being passed along from step to step. Rather, for each step, we should just look over the entire sentence or the entire sequence 
and then kind of get context from there. So um, the, the network will decide which pieces to pay attention with at each stage. So you can see here for the word it, um, it has the antecedent of the animal. And so it's reaching back pretty far back in the sentence to kind of weight the attention that it should take to that antecedent a little bit, you know, a little bit more than it is things that are just around uh, the word it, which actually turned out to work quite well. And it turns out that these transformers, you can kind of, again, stack layers of them and they do a really good job at kind of m modeling just general purpose uh, neural network computation. So they can be applied to a lot of different uh, fields and we've seen the transformer now kind of like spidering out into all sorts of different um, applications. So one of those uh, last year, which is pretty exciting, is uh, the paper, an image is worth 16 by 16 words. Um, so this is uh, the introduction of the vision transformer. So this is a pretty exciting new, new concept um, where instead of having a text sequence, you just have image patches. So you chop up your image into a little linear pro pro projection of flattened patches. And then you can use those as features that you're passing through to the same transformer encoder. Um, and underneath the hood, this transformer encoder is actually pretty much the same PyTorch code, whether you're in NLP or you're in, in computer vision, and it's being applied to both scenarios. And so you can just chop your image up in, into these features um, and then uh, kind of let the attention uh, mechanisms do the rest. Um, so this is, this is pretty exciting that um, we're starting to see kind of the more results coming out of transformers and, and computer vision. And before we wrap up for the day, I just wanted to talk about a few of these new um, techniques. So uh, there's sort of that I was talking about the same PyTorch code that is under the NLP and computer vision um, techniques. So that's um, this new concept, you know, that maybe uh, PyTorch is actually really just going to kind of coalesce on this transformer architecture. Um, and Sumeth Santala, the one of the authors of PyTorch, uh, said said as much in one of his recent talks. Um, and then uh, the other thing is this is being applied in image classification, object detection, and image generation. So certainly for image classification, we've already seen uh, the vision transformer perform better um, than other architecture um, for that, even better than CNN. So that's kind of a, a big thing. Uh, to be looking at as uh, these transformers keep coming into vision. And then the other thing that we've seen recently is OpenAI's CLIP model. So the CLIP model is um, a way to connect uh, text and images, and it uses a transformer on either side. So there's a transformer for text and there's a transformer for, for vision. And then these create um, features or like text features or for image features. And then you could, uh, can look at the similarity between the two of those. And the way that was trained was by um, kind of trying to guess based on a data set which image matched a given caption and which caption matched a given image. Um, and that's kind of a cool way to show how you can have two dueling transformers uh, coming together to create new uh, state-of-the-art technology. And if you read the paper on Clip, you'll see that the modeling behind it is really not too, too immense. It's um, you're kind of able to focus more on your data set, focus more on the data and let the transformer figure out how to map uh, inputs to outputs. So hope you enjoyed watching this uh, RoboFlow research rundown here. If you want to see more content like this and keep track of uh, the pace of where things are moving in computer vision, please like and subscribe below. And um, always happy to have all of you and we'll see you in the next video.